Hey, we're here at the Aga Khan Museum visiting the Moon, a Voyage Through Time Art Exhibition. Estão preparados para uma viagem muito especial? Hoje vamos até a Lua. We're hitting the moon. And you're coming with us. We're here with Sarah Beamborg, the Seniors Exhibition Manager at the Aga Khan Museum. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Us. Thank you for coming. Um, so tell us a little bit about generally just the Aga Khan Museum. Sure. So we're a relatively new museum when you think about how many museums have been around for up to 100 years. We're celebrating our fifth birthday this September. Um, we opened here in Canada um, with the basis of our museum being the core collection from the family, from His Highness's collection, the Aga Khan family, and so we've been hosting temporary exhibitions for the last four and a half years, and we are an interesting museum in that we celebrate traditional arts, but we also celebrate intangible arts, so music, food, um, dance, poetry, all those things. We've got a really re robust performing arts department, but a really, really busy education department. So we're a museum where you could come and spend the entire day because you come see the exhibitions, maybe have a little something to eat in our restaurant and then go see a beautiful performance in, in the auditorium. And so we're really sort of trying to approach art on all levels. The Aga Khan Museum is welcoming everyone to travel somewhere special. Since the dawn of civilization, the moon has captivated cultures. To mark the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 lunar landing, the moon a voyage through time explores our enduring fascination with this enchanting orb in the sky and looks at the role it has played in faith, science and the arts across the Muslim world and beyond. We really wanted to look at the moon from the perspective of you know arts found in Islamic civilizations. And so the moon means so much to all of us, but it's really important in the Muslim calendar because it's the moon that sets the calendar. So that was our initial way to get into it, but really the moon means something very special to you, it means something very special to me. And so this is probably one of those exhibitions that will speak to everybody on multiple levels. O museu dedica esta exposição ao único satélite natural da Terra. Aqui podemos encontrar vários dispositivos interativos e instalações que nos convidam a observar e imaginar a Lua da forma que quisermos. Most exhibitions take about a year and a half. This one is was the same. They knew they wanted to talk about the moon, so we had two curators for this one. We had um, or, uh, Dr. Ulrika Alkamis, who is our director of collections and public programming, and she worked with a co-curator based in Michigan named um, Dr. Christiane Gruber, and they just they. It's a really fun process because they just dream about what they'd like to have happen in the gallery. They pick the objects, they, they look at the stories they want to tell, and then they turn to our team, which is exhibitions, and then we hire a designer, and we all work together to get to the finish line, which is what you see here. We really wanted this show to celebrate the moon at every turn. So you'll notice the walls are curved, the spaces are really warm and, and, and welcoming. Also, we have a lot of tour groups coming through, so we wanted the design, we, enough space for people to congregate, but also enough time to get really, you know, space to get really close to things too. A Lua foi desde sempre fonte de inspiração para a criação de arte. Foi também mentora de várias crenças e serviu para fortalecer o entendimento científico durante milhares de anos. Spanning pre-Islamic times to the present day and delving into the arts, literature and music, the Moon, a voyage through time, brings together important miniature paintings, scientific instruments, Islamic manuscripts, and contemporary works of art to illustrate the wonder at the moon that is shared among cultures. In Islam, the moon is one of those sort of non-verbal cues. So you often see um, a crescent moon on top of mosques, as a finial on top of mosques. So you know that that building is a place where there's a Muslim uh, community, much like you see crosses on the top of churches. And so the moon is this great symbol of Islam. You often see it on flags and on sort of national symbology. And it's the first sighting of the crescent moon after the new moon that sets the monthly calendar. So Ramadan is set by that. Um, other celebrations and feasts happen as a result of the first sighting of the crescent moon. 
And so that sets the tone, but also, so we look at spirituality in the show, but we also look at science. And in the Middle Ages, there was such a fertile time when scientists all over the world were developing information and sharing information. And the moon factors really heavily into uh, nautical trade, nautical voyages, that sort of thing, because people used the moon and the stars to chart their voyages. And then finally, we look at art, because art shows inspiration. What inspires people to create art? And the moon is found all over poetry, music, paintings, sculpture. So really, we could sort of look at anything based on the moon. Há uma instalação que se destaca neste céu. É isso mesmo, a lua, gigante, com 5 metros. Dr. Alchemist had seen that artwork online. And Luke Jerram is a British artist based in London. And he has these seven meter moons and they're perfectly technically accurate to the surface of the moon because he worked with all of the photography he could get from NASA, used a, a digital software system to stitch it all together so that he could print onto nylon a perfect moon. So when um, Dr. Alchemist had, had seen that, she said, you know, let's try to do this. And we have this old joke in exhibitions that curators always ask us to hang the moon. And this time we actually were able to hang the moon. Um, Luke's sculptures at seven meters were going to be too big for our space. We didn't want it to feel oppressive. We wanted the moon to feel beautiful and uplifting. And in communications with him, he was willing to make us a five meter moon. So that's what you see here. And it's a real showstopper. And we really wanted to bring the moon to Toronto because it's very, very special to so many people. This is a very moody and comfortable space where everyone will definitely feel relaxed. I'm hoping people come in here and feel like the moon is for them, that it's a gift we've brought to Toronto, certainly with the sculpture, but also the lunar sample here at the entrance. We've been really busy, which is awesome. You know, there's nothing more meaningful for the staff here than to have people having fun in our galleries and really enjoying themselves. So we've had record attendance, which is awesome. We've had a busy, busy March break, which is great because obviously this appeals to everybody and to families. But last week we had something really special happen. We had a young man propose to his girlfriend right in front of the moon. And so it's my hope that the moon spurs us all to these moments of creativity or declarations of love or inner thought. We offer a place here in the gallery where people can write poems to the moon or create a magnet poem to the moon. And I really hope people come here and sort of think, ah, this is a peaceful space to be close to the moon. And it's indoors, it's comfortable. So we've got really comfortable cushions under there so people can lie under the moon. I hope people come on first dates. It'll be great. No mundo da lua, perdemos-nos neste espaço. If you have the chance, take some time to visit this exhibition that is on till August 18th. If you're on the other side of the planet, we hope we made you feel closer to the skies because hitting the city brings you to the moon and back. <laughs>